But anyhow, I got something what I, I don't want to do, but I have, there's a reason for it because these people are going to be blessed. God has a purpose for it. But Skip, Sharon, and uh, don't tell me about Pearl Edda because I was called a love. I, 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 I want you guys to come on up. And they, uh, the Lord is leading them on, and we're going to pray wherever they go that God's going to bless them. I know we've been blessed the whole time they've been here. In fact, every time we go in the kitchen and we go, I look at the plug up here. They did so much, the, the stage, and they did so much work. So we appreciate that. You know. And uh, But the only thing, I don't want you to be like my kids because I, I, I had to let them go, and they got married. But you guys could come back. <laughs> we will. So but the door's open. So let's just let's extend the hands because we want to pray a blessing. We want to release them with a blessing. They've been a blessing to us. And so, Father, we just thank you for Skip, Sharon, and Pauletta. Oh, as they blessed us uh, these years, and they've truly been a blessing and a backup, truly a backup for us, Lord, and my wife and I in this congregation. So we ask that you bless them, Lord, and, and they come to ask to be released because the Holy Spirit is leading them out. So we release them into your hands, Holy Spirit. And we thank you for the reports we're going to be getting, what you're doing in their lives. So we release them to you now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 I hear, hear all the reports. And God bless you. Can I still call you if I need any work? Every time I need anything. But anyhow, tonight I'm going to get to sit and relax. And can I, can I ask Christopher? Uh, three three years ago, he, he was six. I thought you were 13. Yeah, I mean, you got the young. Look at this. Do you shave yet? Yeah. Oh. God has a sense of humor. we got the youngest and the oldest, but God's still working in all of us. And, but uh, uh, three years ago, uh, he was 16, I guess. Yeah. And uh, it was, I remember that church, and it was, the worship was going on. I, mean, I, I got blessed by it. He was up front and just standing, worshiping the Lord. And I, and I says to my wife, and I even shared with your dad, I said, this kid is clean inside and out. That's what I said back then. I didn't know, I didn't know anything about you then. And I haven't said, I heard, I keep hearing about this young kid going around preaching all over the place, you know, and I, you know, I didn't pay too much attention to it. And then three weeks ago, you came here. Mm-hmm. And I come over there, called you. I didn't know you, who you were. And I said, you know, prayed for you. I said, wow, you know, if I, could, I think we even prayed in tongues. Because yes. we ran out of English and we prayed in tongues, you know. <laughs> and then, then you came for Yoshi's. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I went over to him. I says, who are you? He says, this is what I got blessed by. He says, I'm Yoshi's friend. That's why I knew the humility, because most people says, I'm an apostle. I'm a prophet. I'm a pa-. You know, you know what? God's looking for servants. I mean, you want to turn me off, come and tell me, you know, oh, I have people, one time a woman came back, I'm an apostle. <laughs> you know, I mean, God's looking for servants. He's not looking for titles, and that, that really blessed me when you said that, you had a humble heart, you know. But anyhow, I'm going to sit down Perfect. and do whatever you have to do. Awesome. Love you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Praise God. Perfect. Sure. Thank you so much, Pastors. Really appreciate it. You and your lovely wife are such a blessing. How's the Church of Jesus Christ doing? Good? No, let's see this side. How's the Church of Jesus Christ doing? Really? Let's try the middle. How's the Church of Jesus Christ doing? I think this side won over that side. How's the Church of Jesus Christ doing? Pretty good and decent. Pretty good and decent. Ah, we're a bunch of locos, cuckoos for Jesus, amen? Man, I'm like drunk. You guys are blessed. Literally, you guys are blessed to be in the house of the Lord. What a beautiful atmosphere to be here. Literally, being in that worship. Man, I thought I went to heaven. Which really, I did. I did. Amen. How many of you know that heaven came down here? Heaven came down here. Pastors, I'm literally just blessed and honored. Thank you so much to be here in this pulpit. It's an honor from God. 
literally, I'm just tremendously honored and so blessed. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart that the Lord spoke to you and you are obedient to Christ as always so that I could minister to your flock. Thank you. Thank you. And Father, thank you so much for the honor. I'm so honored and blessed. Thank you, my Jesus. Well, praise God, church. Ah, Lord is good. Amen. Amen. Man, I'm like, I don't know how I'm standing, literally. I don't know how I'm standing. I'm just like trying to stand right here. You're saying that you're going to sit down. I'm, I'm like, oh, man. But no, God is good. How many of you have uh, heard me preach before? Just out of a hands. Oh, okay. Good number of you. Good number of you. Pretty good. Pretty good. How many of you, this is your first time in this church? <laughs> I got you there. Awesome. I see a little hands. Perfect. Well, praise God. Another one. How many of you were in my last meeting that I was speaking on the anointing? That was you. Okay, so a couple of you. Perfect. Um, I was, uh, when was this? This was Wednesday. Wednesday, I was speaking about the anointing, something so beautiful and something so glorious. You know, one thing I believe that the church is really lacking, but praise God, this church really possess is the anointing of God. And I believe, church, that it's time that each one of us, we function under the anointing of God. Because the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world, 1 John 4. And it's time that we reflect Christ because Christ is upon us. Literally, Christ is upon us, church. It's time that we realize that Jesus Christ, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the same spirit that was upon the Holy Spirit, that was upon Apostle Peter, that was upon Apostle Paul, that is upon all the great men of God today, right now is inside of us. That is a great revelation right there. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that destroyed Satan and gave him a black eye, is the same spirit that is upon this church, upon the believer, to the glory of God the Father. Amen? Amen. And I wanted to cover this. If you're taking notes, I wanted to cover this. God is comfortable when we are uncomfortable. God is, I'm going to repeat that. God is comfortable when we are uncomfortable. Mm. Church, it's time that we get uncomfortable on what is happening right now. I'll give you an example. David, he was uncomfortable because a giant came named Goliath and was making fun of the Lord our God and the Jewish community. He was uncomfortable. And sometimes God would take you one step backwards so he could take you three steps forward. Why? So that the presence of God could literally flow out of you like a river. The greatest danger of a Christian is to be complacent. The greatest danger of a Christian is not to hunger for the presence of God. The greatest danger of a Christian is to be settled with the presence of God. This is the presence. I feel it. It's an honor. It's a glory, but I'll settle for it. But that's a lie from the pit of hell. That is the greatest danger. It is time, church, that we arise with more hunger like never before. It is time, church, that deep inside of us, that deep calls unto deep, and we hunger for the presence of God, that we hunger for the glory of God, that everything that we got with all that we have, we will live that the lamb that was slain would receive the glory of his suffering, that he will increase, but that we will decrease, that it will not, it will not be about a man, but it will be about about the son of man i'm tired of talking about stories i want to be a story to reflect jesus christ to the glory of god the father i hear stories of john g lake i hear stories of charles finley i hear stories of ted shuttlesworth i hear i hear all these stories which are great and wonderful but the same holy spirit that was upon them is upon us christ church and it's time that we do something about it literally it's time that we do something about it today as i was worshiping under that glory and that wonderful presence and just being with jesus it is my vision church literally it is my vision church to see a generation my, my specifically youth because now youth we're losing them like crazy about five percent 
of them are Bible-based believers. But anyway, it's my burning desire to see a youth, a generation, doesn't matter what age now, but just to see them burning for God. Because if we don't burn, they will burn. And we don't burn with the fire of God. And we don't burn with the love of God. Because many people, they're burning for the power of God. But the greatest power is not the power, but it's in the love. The greatest power is in the love of Jesus Christ. That we burn with that love. That we love one another as a brother, as a sister. That we love one another just as Christ loves us. It is time, church, that we burn with Him. Really quick, before I forget this pastor, precious pastors, I had a dream of you two guys about two days ago, and it involves this church, so it's great. I had a dream that I saw this Lamborghini, or Lamborghini, however you pronounce it, <laughs> Lamborghini, beautiful car, literally. <laughs> it was a beautiful car, literally, powerful, wonderful. I mean, it was Wow. And I saw some people from your church around the vehicle and likewise other people around. And they tried to enter the vehicle, but they were not permitted. They were not permitted. And then I asked the Lord, Lord, why? Why they were not permitted? The Lord said, until my body is in one accord, one mindset, and one purpose, I will allow them to enter the powerful flow. And then I saw a fence around that Lamborghini. And I saw a beautiful white hand. I believe it's the Lord that opened that fence, opened that gate, and it allowed both of you to come in. And the door was open, and you literally took the driver's seat, and you, you took the passenger seat. And both of you were ushered in into more glory, more power. So I believe with all my heart that God is ready to take you into more presence, more glory. Not only you, but in this church, God is ready to usher you into a greatest presence like never before. I was, uh, my friend Yoshki, me and him were excellent buddies. I miss him to death. And I was, he was saying, I'm going to go to Canada and see John Arnott and Toronto and stuff. I was like, brother, you have the Toronto Revival right here. Literally, I was like that. Brother, you have the Toronto Revival right here. What do you mean you're going to go outside and stuff? You have it right here. I envy you. You know, you guys are literally blessed. Literally. You guys are blessed. Amen? But anyway, let's hit the Word of God. It's so funny. The past, uh, somebody gave a prophecy about faith, and today I will speak about faith. I literally sense in my heart that God wants to build each other's faith up. Amen? If you have your Bibles, let's go to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Please, let's stand up for the reading of God's Word. It says, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then Jesus told His disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. I'll read that again. Then Jesus told His disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. Verse 6, And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for His chosen ones? Hallelujah. And will not God bring about justice for His chosen ones who cry out to Him day and night? Will He keep putting them off? I tell you, He will see that they get justice and quickly. Mm. However, when the Son of Man comes, will He find faith on the earth? 
Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I love you, I praise you, I worship you, I adore you, I give you all the glory because it's not about me, it's all about you, God. Lord, we're here fanatics for you, Jesus. We're not afraid, we're not ashamed that somebody tells you you're a Jesus freak. I'm a freak for Jesus because, Lord, you decided to be crazy for me, therefore I will be crazy for you. And God, no matter what the world says, no matter what people say, no matter what family says, but in the end, God, I am my beloved and he is mine. Oh, Lord, I belong to you and only you. You are my heaven, Jesus. Your presence is heaven to me. Jesus, your glory is wonderful to me. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you pour out your glory. You pour out your power. You pour out your spirit. Lord, I refuse to have another, I have another sermon. I refuse to have another preaching. I just want Jesus Christ and him glorified. Lord, I refuse, God, to have another service without your Holy Spirit, without your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Father, glorify your name upon this area so that your son may glorify you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I right now release the kingdom of heaven. I loose the kingdom of heaven upon this area. I decree anything that is not from the Holy Spirit. It leaves right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every spirit of distraction, I bind you in Jesus' strong and mighty name and I command you to flee right now in Jesus' strong and mighty name. Anything that is not from the Holy Spirit, right now it leaves and I declare and decree that the body of Christ edify. I declare and decree that the church is the head and not the tail, the top and not the beneath, uh, more than a conquer in Christ Jesus our Lord, that they can do all things through Christ who gives them the strength, that they're blessed coming in and blessed coming out. Father, I declare and decree for your honor and for your glory that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of breakthrough. Today is the day of deliverance. Today is the day that the Lord has made and I, we will rejoice and be be glad in it. Oh, glory. Shobababa. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have spoken to me. Now speak through me through the reading of God's word and through the preaching of God's word. I'm so honored and so blessed, God. Literally, I'm so honored to serve you, God. You're the best thing that has ever happened to me and will ever happen to me. Thank you, my Jesus. Oh, I love your presence. Your presence makes me whole. Your presence saves me. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Church, take one minute to say that you love the Lord. Oh, come on, pour out your heart. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Oh, God, this is a chapel so that people can marry you. Oh, Sababa. Lord, we we're here for you, God. I do, I do, I do. No strings attached. As long as I have you, I have everything. Lord God, you're more worth than anything in this world. Oh, I do, I do, I do, God. Oh, I'm married to you and only you, God. I'm pledged to Jesus Christ, the master, the one who was and is and is to come. Oh, I thank you, God, that we serve the true God, that we serve the way, the truth, and the life, that we serve the everlasting God, that we serve the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the comforter, the wonderful counselor. We serve Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of kings and the Lord of lords forever and ever and ever. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, glory to the Lamb. Shoba, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Oh, mama, my God, you may sit down, church. I love the Lord. I don't know about you, but I love the Lord. In order to be married to God, you must be totally divorced of this world, church. Mm. In order to be married to God, you must be totally divorced of this world, period. 
You're committed to one person, and his name is Jesus Christ. You're committed to one God, and his name is Jesus Christ. You're committed to one, one Holy Spirit. His name is the Holy Spirit. You're committed to one husband, and his name is Jesus Christ. You're committed only to him and only him. Mm. Sin and hell are married until repentance proclaims the divorce. Sin and hell are married until repentance proclaims the divorce. Amen? But anyway, I'm not going to get into that. Faith. As I was praying today, it's my vision, church, to see the body of Christ edified according to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12, that we all reach into one unity. And today, or for the past three days, I've been praying, and I was like, God, what do you want me to speak? And the Lord told me to speak about faith. You see, I could only give fresh manna from heaven. I cannot give you old food because it's not the old food that is good for you. You see, church, it is time that we hear the voice of God so we're able to deliver the voice of God, and therefore the church is delivered by God. And it is only when you hear His voice that you become free. It's only when you hear His voice that you're upon Christ. It's only when you hear His voice. And it's literally an obligation and a duty every time I come in a pulpit that I hear God and I have to deliver the words from God. Every time. So today, I got in my heart to speak about faith. I don't know about you, but in this day and age, we need faith, church. In this day and age, no matter if the economy is going down, no matter if Wall Street is going down, no matter what's happening in Washington, D.C., no matter what's happening in Sacramento, no matter what's happening in Atlanta, no matter what's happening in Miami, but if this world goes down, we know that the church of Jesus Christ will go up. Because in the midst of darkness, there is a light. In the midst of despair, there is a hope. In the midst of, uh, in the midst of destroy and chaos, there is life and life more abundantly church and in this day and age we gotta be like what jesus said to martha have faith in god and today i'm a messenger of the most high god all the way from irvine california and tell you the truth that have faith in god have faith in god for your children have faith in god for your great grandchildren have faith in god for that lost loved one have faith in god for that brother have faith in god for that sister have faith in god for that job have faith in God for this world. Have faith in God upon America. Because all the way from San Diego to San Francisco, I believe that God's mercy is upon this land. Because as long as we're here, the gates of hell will not prevail. Because we are literally the gateway of heaven so that his kingdom will come down on earth as it is in heaven, church. Amen. Amen. But this is the key. Have faith. In God. Notice what verse, verse 8 says. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? How do you increase your faith? Number one, hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. But notice what it says. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing of the word of God. You know, many times the church, they only read the word, but they don't allow the word to read you. You see, there is something when you just read the word. When you taste the word, but there is something when you chew the word. Because when you chew the word, you grab the vitamins of the word. And it's time that we read this word over and over and over and over again. I remember when I used to go, when, I, when my mother was paralyzed, I would read this word and I would say, God, your word says, by your stripes I am, she is healed. Your word says, bless the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, bless his holy name. And forget not all his benefits who forgives you of all your diseases and heals you of all your diseases. Your word says in Jeremiah 30 that I'll restore you to health and heal you of your wounds. Your word says in Jeremiah 17, heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, Lord, and I will be saved. And I will reread this word no matter what my circumstance says, no matter what my problem said, no matter what was going around me. But in the end, I knew that Jesus Christ is upon me because of the faith that I have in him. We have to read this word 
Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. But you want me to, I'm going to be frank with you, church. I'm going to be very frank with you. It is time that the church of Jesus Christ, yes, we read the word, but we read until we hear. We read until we hear God. You want to know how Abraham, he became Abraham? Because he heard the voice of God. And therefore that gave him faith to go forward. You want to know how Moses is Moses? Because he heard the word of God. And therefore that gave him faith to go forward. You want to know how Daniel was Daniel? Because he heard the voice of God. You see, there is something, church, when you hear the voice of God that melts down the enemy's voice, that melts down your voice, that melts down that condemnation voice, Voice, that melts down that evil spirit voice but lifts up the faith inside of you because when you hear God's word upon your life it is like drawing the true life out of you because when you hear his word you hear his identity when you hear his word you hear the voice of your lover and finally when you hear the voice of God church no matter what may come against you but if God is for you who can be against you when you hear God's voice, that's when you hear your solution. When you hear God's voice, it's when you hear your answer. But it's hearing the word. You know, many people, and I, and I used to be one of them, used to get up, read my devotion, what a bing, bam, boom. And then I went out, and then a problem came. Oh, my Lord, holy moly, ravioli, what should I do? But no, the word says something different. Amen, church? So number one, we got to hear the word of God. Number two, we have to look unto Jesus and not look unto this world. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, sat down at the right hand at the throne of God. When you, when you see, how would I put this? When you see with your eyes unseen, then you will see with your eyes seen. When you see the invincible, you will realize the visible. That his kingdom is superior than this kingdom. Many people, they have their eyes on Wall Street. Many people, they have their eyes in their bank account. Many people, they have their eyes on their wallet. Many people, they have their eyes on the White House. Many people, they have their eyes on their parents. Many people, they have their eyes upon a man. But the Bible says, curse is the man that trusts in a man. Because man will fail you. People will fail you. That person that you love will fail you. But the person that will never fail you is Jesus Christ. The person that has your back before the attack is Jesus Christ. The person that will love you until the end is Jesus Christ. The the person that's not mad at you but is madly in love with you is Jesus Christ. The person that will love you forever and ever and ever, his name is Jesus Christ. And church, it's time that we don't look upon the man because the Bible says that our eyes are the lamp of our soul. And you see right now, as, as long as we see this world, we will reflect this world. But once we see Jesus, we will reflect Jesus. Once we see that life, we will reflect that life. Once we see that love, we will reflect that love. Once we see the Lord, the King of glory, we will reflect that glory. And that's why Jesus said, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Oh my Lord. Hallelujah. Church, we have to look unto Jesus. Because once we look unto Jesus, we're not looking unto something else. How many of you, you have been in the presence of God, and you know all hell broke loose, but because you're with Jesus, it's like nothing happened. Eight people, I'm in the right place. Thank you, God. Help me, Jesus. How many of you literally have been in the presence of God, and like your whole body is anesthetic, but you know because you're in his hands, no matter what happens, nothing will fail you. All right, there we go. Why? Because you looked unto Jesus. 
Church, that is the main thing. If the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 2, fix your eyes on Jesus, it's because our eyes was fixed on something else. And if our eyes are fixed on something else, our eyes are fixed on not so something that is not part of our destiny. And many of you, you're looking back in your past, which really will hold you from the true person that you are to be. One of the greatest dangers of a Christian is to be in the past. Because once we're in the past, we cannot see God. Once we're in the past, we cannot see the presence of God. And instead of having an Emmanuel spirit, God is with us. They have an Ichabod spirit. God has departed from us. Why? Because they're all the way looking in their past, looking and looking. Where was God? Where was God? But all the time, Jesus was in reality right in front of them. But because they were looking in their past, they didn't see the future. You know, you want to know why people look in the past? Because they have regret. Because they wish they could have done this and do that and stuff. And they blame God of the promises. They blame God. But reality, that promise that you were desiring was not God's promise, but was your promise. When people look in the past, they were thinking it was God's promises, but reality, it was your promise. You see, that man that you want in your life may have been nice for you, but it wasn't good for you. That job that you wanted so much and that you craved and you fasted and you cried and you thought it was the promise of God and you never got it, it may have been nice for you, but it wasn't good for you. That person that you were praying all the time that would just come into your life, it may have been nice for you, but it wasn't good for you. That ministry that you've been crying and next you know you got something else, it may have been nice for you, but it wasn't good for you. And you see, there's something different on something that was nice for you and something that was good for you. Because the Bible says in James that every good and perfect gift comes from above. One thing about the Lord, He will not give you something nice, but He will give you something good. But if we stop looking in the past and we start now looking into our Jesus, we will see the result of Jesus. And that result is life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Stop looking into your past, church. Stop looking into your past. Why, church? The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And when a person looks in their past, instead of being liberated, they become bonded. Therefore, once you look in your past, you come out of the covering of God. Come out from the covering of the Holy Spirit, and you come into another spirit. You grieve the Holy Spirit, and you please another spirit. You don't know how many people I counsel. I counsel and counsel and counsel, and they lift up their problem. They lift up their past more than God, and anything you lift up more than God is an idol. It's an idol. So instead of looking unto Jesus, what is ahead? Instead of looking unto Jesus, they grieve the Holy Spirit. <sighs> and they please another spirit. But I don't know about you, to, I don't know about you, church, but today God is saying, I'm doing something new. Today I am doing something new. Forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. For see, I'm doing something new. True faith comes once we look unto Jesus and not unto the world. Because as soon as we look unto Jesus, we get into our future. We get into our purpose. We get into our destiny. We get unto Him because of the faith that makes us free. Amen. Amen? Number three, how do you increase your faith? By not believing the lie. I love this quote by Bill Johnson. When you believe the lie, you empower the lie. When you believe the lie, you empower the lie. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. Have you guys ever got a headache so much that you're like, oh, man, this is a tumor? <laughs> okay, see some laughs. I don't feel by myself then. I don't feel all alone. You believe that lie, and therefore you empower that lie. And I didn't know, but a new scientific research, the mind is connected to the heart through the central nervous system. Didn't really know that. And you see, it's time, church, that we do not believe the lie. We have to believe the truth. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. 
Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. It is time that we come to the truth so that we will see the truth so that the truth will set us free. When we believe the lie, we empower the liar. How much more that now we know the truth of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, church, but a $1 Bible could destroy legions upon legions of devils. A $1 Bible could shake this world upside down. A $1 Bible could shake my high school upside down. That more than 3,000 people came to know Jesus Christ. A $1 Bible could shake my life upside down. No matter what the doctor said, that I would never walk again. No matter if the doctor said that I would not have proper speech etiquette. But a $1 Bible set me free because I choose not to believe the lie, but I choose to believe the truth. And those who know the truth shall be set free free church. It is time that we arise as the body of Christ, believing the truth, confessing the truth, knowing the truth, and speaking out the truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Now, what is faith? Number one, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Notice what it says. Now faith. It doesn't say tomorrow. It doesn't say after 10 days, after 20 days, after 3 days, after 3 months, after 3 years. It is now. It is right now. It is the kingdom of God that suffers violence and the violent take it by force. It is time, church, that we don't say, oh, I probably it will, or, or God, I hope so. It is time. Faith says says, I know so. Faith says, I hope so. No way, Jose. Faith says, I know so. And once we pray for a thing, it is time, church, that we go, I know there was, this will go. When I was preaching in Colombia, Bogota, there was this lady who came to me filled with cancer and had a tumor in her right breast. And next, you know, she's like, Christian, my families don't know. It is dangerous. I probably have 30, 30 plus days of life. And what happened? Did I go, oh, Lord, no way, Jose? No, I said, I come against this thing in the name of the Lord. Because now faith, and I take this right now. Satan, I right now take this health by violence. And I took it by violence. And in less than one day, she went to the doctor and she got healed. Why, church? Because greater is God that lives in us than the one in the world. Amen? Hallelujah. I remember I was in Bogota, Colombia. And I was preaching in a church there, and it's like the love of Christ just came down. And ex, you know, this person, you know, there it's poor, and they have to walk for miles upon miles to get a bus. And meanwhile, this, this person is carrying probably like a four or four, five month year old baby, and she's climbing the bus, and her heel broke. And what happened? She threw the baby on the cement floor. And they, oh, it was terrible. And next, you know, they saw the baby, and the baby wasn't breathing or anything at all. So they decide to run back miles all the way back to the church. But you see, once a, tra a transformed mind transforms a culture, and a transformed culture transforms a city, and a transformed city transforms a nation. And as soon as somebody ch times, somebody transforms their mind, they see the transformation of God. And there I was praying by faith. People were on the floor. You see people crying of the presence of God from five-year-olds to if there was a 500-year-old, there was there. And they were weeping of the presence of God. And they run desperate and hungry. And they threw the baby in the altar. And I said, by faith, God, now faith. And all I did was put my hands and I said, this spirit of death, leave. And instantly the baby's eyes was open. Why, church? Now faith. Many of you, you're compromising the gospel. Many of you are compromising your promises. Many of you are compromising if the Lord's will. If it is in heaven, it is the Lord's will. If it is in heaven, it is the Lord's will. And if you bring it down by faith, it will come to pass through faith. Because faith is the currency of heaven. I love to say it. Faith is like a bridgeway of heaven. It opens the floodgates of heaven. And as long as you have faith, it comes down right to you. It is by faith it is done. Now faith. It's we have to be sure. Number two, I love this verse. Romans chapter 4 verse 21. What is faith? Faith, Abraham said, is being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. 
I'm waiting for a generation that's fully persuaded that they know that they know that their God exists. I'm waiting for a generation that's fully persuaded that they know that they know when they go into high school, it will, be, it will give the devil a black eye. I'm waiting for a generation that they know that they know that the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is living in them. And therefore, wherever they go, they will see the captives delivered. They will see the sick healed. They will see the poor rich. They will see the lost say, I'm waiting for a generation that they're fully persuaded that God has the power to do what he has promised. I'm waiting for a generation that will burn because of his faith, burn because of his glory, burn because of his faithfulness. I don't know about you, church, but I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm tired of the church not being fully persuaded that God is faithful, not being fully persuaded that God is going to do what he promised. And I come to tell you in the name of Jesus, I'm fully persuaded that God will fulfill the purpose over your life. We have to be fully persuaded like Abraham that God had the power to do what he had promised. Your faith will take you where your mind can't fit. I'll see if this side gets it. Your faith will take you where your mind can't fit. God bless you. You see, your mind says it won't happen, but your faith says it will happen. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. I remember when I was evangelizing. Here comes, there's, here comes this person. All gold teeth, pants all the way to his lower than his buttocks. And, he, and, I told, and I just sensed in my spirit that he, to tell him about Jesus. You know, and I thank God through this ministry, over 3,000 people have came to know Jesus Christ. And as I was telling him about Jesus, I said, you, you have a heavenly father and his name is Jesus. He loves you. He shed his blood for you. And he wants you to know that he cares for you. Out of a man that was supposedly nice, he started cursing me from every alphabet in the book. I didn't even know all of them from A to Z. I was like so shocked, literally, A to Z. And he's like, don't tell me about that Jesus. Why did my mother reject me? Why did my mother say that she hates me so much? Why did my father commit suicide with never telling me that he loves me? Why? And I was praying, God, in the name of Jesus, I'm fully persuaded that today is the day of salvation. It doesn't matter what that spirit is saying through him. It doesn't matter what he is saying. But your word says it. I believe it. And that settles it. And as he was praying, as he was just cry as he was just pouring out his anger, and I was praying in my mind, from anger he came to weeping. Weeping and weeping. And I told him about Jesus. I told him about the Father. I told him about the Son. I told him about the Holy Spirit. And instead of running away from God, he ran to God. Oh, thank you, God. Because I am fully persuaded. Church, be fully persuaded today. I beg of you and I ask you, be fully persuaded. You're an answer prayer to many. You're an answer prayer to many. And again, I remind you, if we don't burn, they burn. The world is looking for something real. The world is looking for something that is contagious. The world is looking for something life. And if you have to reflect that. Just like Peter's, or just like Paul, shadow, heal the sick. You could only shadow what overshadows you. And if you're fully persuaded of who he is in your life, then you will know what you will become in life. As he is, so are we in this world. And we have to be, us as the body of Christ, fully persuaded that God, what God says God does. If God says, I'm going to preach the gospel, God will do that good work. If God says that by his stripes I am healed, God will do that in Jesus' name. If God says, I will live another year, therefore God will do that I will live another year. Amen? Praise God. So I just explained to you what is faith. Now, what are the promises of faith? Number one, there is hope for your life. Say that with me. There is hope for my life. Now, say it like you mean it. There is hope. 
for my life. Really quick, go to the book of Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Romans, Romans, Romans. Thank you, Father. Romans chapter 4, verse 18. It says, Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed. And so became the father of many nations. Just it had been said to him, So shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Verse 20 of chapter 4. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promises of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. Notice what it says in verse 18. Against all hope, Abram, in hope, believe. How many of you are against all hope? That no matter if, no matter if your resume says you're not going to get that job, but against all hope, in hope, I will believe. No matter if, you're, if the doctor says that you don't have enough years to live until 80 because you have this condition and this condition, but against all hope, we will believe. No matter if the world says that you're broke, bust, and disgusted, but against all hope, in hope, we will believe. No matter what the people say, that you don't have a future, you don't have a purpose, but against all hope, Abraham, in hope, believe. And I encourage you today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, against all hope, have hope in God, because your redemption draws nigh. Amen? Amen. Notice, without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was good as dead. <laughs> you see, it's fine to face the fact. But it's wrong that the fact faces you. It's fine that you face the fact. But it's wrong that your fact faces you. Why? Because faith wins over fact. And the just Habakkuk 2.4 shall live by his faith. That's why some of you, you're paying bills that you never knew that you were going to pay. That's why some of you are paying rents of places because you never knew you could pay rents of places. That's why some of you are with that person because you only knew that by faith it took you there. Why? Because as soon as we receive Christ, we come out of this mentality of feeling and we come into a mentality of knowing, which is by faith. And once we have faith, our faith wins over the fact. You see, the truth is that I may be sick, but the, f the faith says that by his stripes I am healed. The fact is my sins are taking me to hell, but the faith says I am going a one-way ticket to heaven. You see, the fact is, I may be poor, but the faith says, I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. The fact is, I don't have a big GPA to take me into college, but the faith says that I am the head and not the tail. Church, I come to tell you in the name of Jesus, your faith wins over your facts. And if you arise today with faith, you will win the facts. If you arise today upon San Juan Capristrano and you have faith, you will defeat the facts of San Juan Capristrano. If today you arise upon your city with faith, you will defeat that spirit upon that area. I was with a friend, Pastor Roosevelt Muriel in Colombia, Bogota. And awesome man. And the Lord spoke to him to go to Cartagena, Bogota, uh, Cartagena, Colombia. It's a city there that was filled with many drug lords, many drug lords. In fact, was the number one. And he rented out a stadium, and he packed it out, crying out to God, Lord, I take this city by violence. You see, the Lord will bless what you bless. One day my mom was giving a prophecy to somebody, and the Lord says, Yo estoy listo cuando tú estás listo. I'm ready once you're ready. And some of you, you're waiting until you hear God and you've been waiting and waiting and waiting, but God is waiting until you move so that God will bless. 
So this person moved to Cartagena, rented this uh, huge stadium, football stadium, and cried out to God, packed it out with pastors, with leaders, with the church, and rebuking that spirit, rebuked it. They faced the fact that all that city was filled with drug lords. They faced the fact that that city was filled with cocaine and marijuana. They faced the fact, but they had faith that this city belongs to the Lord. They had faith that the cities belong to the Jesus Christ. They had faith faith that the earth is the Lord and everything in it. They had faith. And you see, they spoke the word of God and they had the result of the word of God. And now in Cartagena is the least place of drugs and all over Colombia. You see, your faith, your faith works your wor- the faith works the word, but the word won't work unless you work it. And unless you work it with faith, then you will see the result of the faith. But it is time that we work the word. Many of you, you have the word, but you don't work it. And it's time that we work it with the word. Amen? Amen. Number two, your walk in future is secured. Your walk and future is secured. Your promises of your faith. Number two, your walk and future is secured. Say that with me. My walk and my future is secured. Now say it like you mean it. My walk and my future is secured. Notice what it says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8. By faith Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. How many of you feel, and I sense this right now in my spirit, that you don't know what's happening in your life? How many of you feel what is going on in my life, why I'm doing this, why I'm over this place, and what is going on? How many of you feel like that? I have good news for you. You're in the perfect will of God. (laughs) Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24, it says, A man's steps are directed by the Lord. Who can understand his ways? Listen to that. A man's steps are ordered by the Lord. Who can understand his ways? God leads you to California. Why I'm in California? What's happening? You went there for the job, but you lost the job, but instead you were actually there for the church. You're serving in ministry, and you don't know what's going to happen in the ministry, but that's a good sign that God is in the ministry. He doesn't want you to think what is here, but He wants you to reflect what is in here. You see... I I moved to Atlanta, Georgia for six months of my life, and I didn't know why I I was going there. But all I knew was that God told me. You see, many people, they go to the prophets. Give me the word of the Lord. What should I do? They go to church. They go to their pastors. They go to this and they go to that. But in the end, you have to come to your knees, and you got to go to Jesus saying, God, what shall I do? Come on, anybody here? Some of you, you're looking for a prophet, but go to the king of all prophets, and he will tell you what to do. And I had to make a big decision in my life to go to Atlanta, Georgia. And the prophets were like, no, you stay here. Or, yeah, you can go. It's like gambling right here. What should I? Yes, no, maybe so. What should I do? Until the Lord spoke to me. It's like, stop going to the prophet. Go to me. And I went on a seven-day fast. And, oh, man, it was during finals. And I was in weight training reflex, right? And my, poor, my coach was like, Arson, man, I'm, I'm fasting. Oh, good. He even made me double the work. But anyway, that's another story. But I was fasting. And I've learned, I was, I was so hungry. God, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Should I go this? Or, you know, sometimes we, when we're in desperate measures, called desperate answers. And I was so desperate. I was like, God, God. And for the first probably like four days, he did absolutely nothing except he led me towards sin. You want to know why God doesn't want to give you a clear answer through a prophet? It's because he wants you that you first come to him so that he could spend time with you. Many of you, you have dreams, and they're in parables. Numbers speak about that. When God speaks, it's in dreams, but they're in parables. You don't know what it means. Like that dream, I was like, man, Lamborghini. I was like, a Lamborghini. Lord, I wish I could have that, you know? (laughs) But oh well. But I sought the Lord, and not only I got the answer, but I got something way much better, which is the Lord of all the answers. You see, that's why God speaks to you in dreams and parables. 
Or that's why God doesn't speak clearly through a prophet. I'm all for the prophets. I believe that. That's in Ephesians 4.11. But I believe literally, before God gives you a word through a prophet, he wants to give you a word through himself first. But what is the purpose for? So that you will come near to him. You will only come near to him, church. And during this fasting, I was praying. And I was, God, what should I do? What should I do? And for the first four days, he just led me to his heart. Oh, what glory. What glory, what glory, what glory. He led me. And I'm like, Lord, if you don't speak to me, I don't care. As long as I'm with you, I have everything. And finally, the Lord spoke to me and said, go. And I was like, oh, it's you all. I didn't want to go. I had a ministry here. Everything was being settled for me. But you see, church, even though you're not where you're supposed to be, but thank the Lord, you're not where you used to be. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's totally good right there. That's why some people in your life, they had to leave you because they took you to the place where you're supposed to be right now. But God had to take them away because they would not lead you to the place where you're supposed to be. And that's why God took them out of your life. Because he loves you so much that he doesn't want you to do an accident. You see, us as a, we're, yes, his children. But I believe that he raises you from a child of God to a soldier of God. And a child always needs somebody. A child always needs their mommy. A child always needs their poppy. A child always needs somebody. And you see, to the child, he's a lamb. To the mature ring, he is a lion. But to the mature, he's a lion and a lamb. In church, the Lord told me to go. I recognize, yes, he is the lamb of God, but he's also the lion of Judah that will guide me. And if he says go, the righteous are bold like a lion. And I went, and I, I went, and I, I, there I was in Atlanta, Georgia, and I trusted this word in Hebrews 11, 8. And I said, God, by faith, Abraham went. And he went to a place that he didn't know where he was supposed to go. And I didn't know what was happening. Many of you feel like that right now. You don't know what is happening, why I'm in this place. These people smell bad. They treat me wrong. And I was there in Georgia. And from almost having it all, I basically had nothing. The Lord breaks you so he could make you. Many times you had to fail so the Lord could humble you so then he could exalt you. Because it's only the humble that God exalts. And there the Lord humbled me. And I was like, God, your word says in Psalm 138, verse 8, the Lord will fulfill his purpose over my life. Lord, your word says the Lord will accomplish what it concerns me. Lord, your word says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And I grabbed the word, even though I didn't see nothing, even though I did not see nothing, but the Lord took me. You see, many people, they have to be constant with the word. They have to be constant with the word by faith. I'll give you an example. I'm sick, but by his stripes I'm healed. I have double pain, but by his stripes I'm healed. I went to the doctors, and they said I have, a, I have something, a spot inside of me, but by his stripes I'm healed. They took me to x-rays. And they found something bad, cancerous, but by his stripes I'm healed. I'm in the hospital right now, but by his stripes I'm healed. I'm under ICU, but by his stripes I'm healed. Now I don't feel pain, but by his stripes I'm healed. They took an x-ray, and now I'm clean, but by his stripes I'm healed. Now I'm out of the doctors, by his stripes I'm healed. Now I'm in my home. By his stripes, I'm healed. Now I'm watching football. By his stripes, I'm healed. <laughs> you see, you have to be constant with the word. You have to be constant with the word so the word will be constant in you. Your circumstances will change, but the word will never change. <laughs> the word will never change if you just work it. You're constant in it. And I grabbed the word. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed until finally the Lord opened the door 
that me that I could be a head pastor of a congregation there in Atlanta, Georgia, called Iglesia Cristiana del Norte. And then God opened a door that I could also be a head pastor there of power soccer that works in physically impaired people that has 500 in the United States, and I oversee them. Then God opened the door. But I love what Pastor Charles said. I'm just a janitor, right? We're just a janitor, just cleaning God's sheep. Amen? Amen? We're just cleaning God's sheep. But I come to tell you, church, I used the word. I had faith, and God fulfilled the purpose in my life. Why? Because I had faith. And many of you, it's time that you have faith that God will do what he has said. I'm a promise of that. No matter what people say, no matter if I'm only 19-year-old and I'm just pastoring a congregation, no matter if I'm traveling every month to preach to them, no matter if I'm traveling every, every summer to preach in Bogota, Colombia, been in over three continents, seeing the sick healed, seeing the dead person raise the dead, uh, seeing just the glory of God, no matter what, but if you have God in your side, God will lift you up because of your faith and your humility. Amen. It is time, church, that we know that we know that God will fulfill his purpose over my life. Sam Walton, in the midst of the Great Depression, he had faith in God. And now his company, Walmart, came in number one in a Fortune 500 company. A traumatized and abused boy named Michael Orr who had no purpose, no future, and these people adopted him, told him about Christ, had faith in God, and now he's playing for the Baltimore Ravens, and a movie came out called The Blind Side. <laughs> Loved it, bro. A man that was born with no legs, no arms, had faith in God, that he will be God's hands and feet, and now he's preaching around the world telling people that Jesus is alive. Church, I have good news for you. Number one, God is in a good mood. Yes. <laughs> Number two, your walk and future is secure. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. That is a blessing. Number three, the walls of impossibilities will fall. Say that with me. The walls of impossibilities will fall. It says in Hebrews 11.30, By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. I'm tired of Christians walking their way of life and not marching the way of life. You see, it is time that we march the way of life. It is time that we march with the gifts of the Spirit. It is time that we march with the fruits of the Spirit. It is time that we march. But that is no more passive Christianity. You see, many Christians up to this day, they're very passive in their walk. They're very passive in their life. They're very passive of who they are. But God raised you to be a soldier. I remind you again, the Bible says in Matthew eleven twelve, 12, the kingdom of God suffered violence in the the violent will take it by force, but it's only the violent. Do we have any people here that would take San Diego by force, that would take San Francisco by force, that would take Sacramento by force, that would take California by fo force, that would take United States of America by force? Do we have any people that would take this world by force? Oh, Christian, I'm not, I'm not a warrior. Well, I'm going to use Greek on you right here. Matthew 11, 12. The kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violence taken by force. The original Greek word for uh, violence or taken by force is the Greek word biato, which means to fight, to press forth, to not give up. Biato comes from the Greek word biazo, which means life, the reason of my purpose and existence. It is in your DNA to take the kingdom of heaven by force. It is in your DNA to take San Juan Capistrano by force. It is in your DNA to take that lost loved one by force. It is in your DNA. 
A church. God will fight if you fight. My God. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 6.12, fight the good fight of faith. Some of you here, you have to fight for your promise. You got to fight for your children. You got to fight for what God has said. You got to fight church. You can't let the enemy fight, fight, and you're just sitting back. I come to tell you the truth. Church, it's time to get out of the defensive mode and become in the offensive mode. Church, stop becoming in the defense and letting the enemy attack you. Now you're going to attack him. The spirit of torment will not attack you anymore if you become that tormentor. The spirit of fear will not attack you if you come and inflict fear. You conquer the fear of man by the fear of the Lord. And how many of you are ready to fear the Lord like never before? I do not accept anything that is God's, anything that's less than God's standard. I'm like, uh uh. Gas price, you're going to go down. Come on, anybody here? 376, I tanked. But literally, church, I do not accept anything that is less than God's standard. I'm like, no, 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 this is not God's standard. I fight in my, I fight in my closet. You know, many, many people, they go towards people and say, oh, look what this person said, and look at this, and blah, 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 blah. No, church, we don't go towards man. We go towards our Father in heaven and say, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Church, it is time that God raises you like a soldier and you fight the good fight of faith. You have to fight, church. Stop being in a defensive mode. I know many Christians, many Christians, they don't enter into their destiny because they never fought. They never fought. They never fought, no matter who you are. But if you know what you are in Christ, you will become what you are in Christ. Church, in the name of Jesus Christ, fight for your high schools. Fight for your families. Fight for those marriages. Fight for them. Fight for them, church. It is time that we fight for United States of America. The world is saying it's going down. But if we fight for it, it will go up. In September 11, 10 years ago, some buffoons tried to destroy the United States of America. But I have good news for them, or good news for us, church. United States of America is still standing and will continue to stand because in God we trust and forever we will trust Him. Amen? Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Oh, Shabbat We trust in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen? My God, I trust him. I trust him. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, I believe, therefore I speak. Many of you, you're praying from in here. But you got to pray from out of here. You got to pray from out of here. Got to pray from out of here. You know, when we were doing communion, the Lord spoke to me so beautiful. I had a, I had a dream. Was it a dream or a vision? I don't remember. A long time ago. And I saw the Lord carrying the cross. So beautiful. Lord carrying the cross, heading to Golgotha. Bloody. Whipped. Brutal. Tired. And when he was ready... When he was ready to give up, ready to say, that's it, ready to flow it in, all I would hear in his heart screaming out, for my children, for my children, whoa, for my children, for my children. When the soldiers mocked him and pushed him and he was there in the ground and was tired, all I heard was, for my children, for my children. Until finally he went unto Golgotha and finally he said, for my children, it is finished church it is finished 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 that breakthrough it is finished that ministry it is finished that lost loved one it is finished that person who's bound in drugs and alcohol it is finished by faith it is finished amen 
It is finished, church. Hallelujah. Praise God. I remember for an increase in my anointing, in the anointing in my life. You see, you could go to many, you could go to Pastor Charles, and I believe he's a man of God with all my heart, and he could lay hands on you until your face turns blue. But one thing about him, he could never impart his history of God. Could never impart. You could go to Bill Johnson, you could go to Benny Hinn's, you could go to whoever you want. They could Im- lay hands upon you, but they could never impart their history with God. And it is your history with God that determines your anointing. It is your history of God that will determine what you will become in God. It is your history with God. You think it is easy to stand up here and to preach with science, wonders, and miracles? You think it is easy? Let the Holy Spirit flow. Unless you pay the price, you will not gain your prize. And I cried out to God. I took the kingdom of God by violence. I was sick and tired of not seeing the power of God in the churches. I was sick and tired. I'm like, God, I don't care if I'm only 19 years old and people look down on me. I've learned this. Never despise the person who's right in front of you because you don't know what he has is what you need. And I paid the price. And I'm like, God, you come down here or I come up there. And I believe, church, from the bottom of my heart, if you want to see a revival like never before, we got to get in our knees and say, God, if you don't come down here, I'll come up there. A soldier of Jesus Christ fights, fights, and fights. Amen? I'm almost done. Number four, through faith, we will advance the kingdom of God. Say that with me. Through faith, we will advance the kingdom of God. Hebrews, 11, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32 through 33. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets who through faith, verse 33, conquered kingdoms. Conquer kingdoms. Conquer kingdoms. God, in the name of Jesus I want to see that this kingdom, the kingdom of San Juan Capristrano, is conquered for the glory of God. The kingdom of Santa Ana, conquered for the glory of God. The kingdom of Orange County, conquered for the glory of God. Come on, church, help me pray. Lord, we want to see the kingdom of Southern California conquered for the glory of God. Lord, the kingdom of Los Angeles, Conquer for the glory of God. The kingdom of Sacramento. Conquer for the glory of God. The kingdom of San Francisco. Conquer for the glory of God. California. Conquer for the glory of God. So, oh, Rabba Soka Rabba. In the name of Jesus. Church, by faith. Through faith, we will advance the kingdom of God. Through faith, church. In my high school, no matter if I was the Christian and they could name me every book in the alphabet and stuff like that, but I advanced the kingdom of God. I advanced. I remember, I, I used to, pre- I preached to everyone. Probably if there was like, let's see, like, probably like 2,000 spoke. 2,000 spoke to people. 2,000 of them. Probably like about three to four, 500, around that range. Received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I remember I spoke to the satanics and gothics. That was so fun. That was so fun, Pastor. It was so fun. They would get red as an apple. And then I, and I heard from, a, from a supposedly like a friend of theirs. It's like, Christian, they have a gun. Or no, they have a knife for you. Don't go to this hallway. Don't go to that hallway. Because they have a knife and they will hurt you. And I heard God. I heard God. And the Lord told me, you will conquer this kingdom. Amen. They told me, stop, stop, stop. We don't want to hear about Jesus. We don't want this Jesus to go around. And the Lord said, preach my kingdom. And I was like, should I go or what? You shall live and not die to proclaim the glory of God. And what happened, church? I went through that hallway, and I said, even though I walk through the shadow of valley of death, I will fear no evil, for the Lord is with me. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. And I saw them red as an apple, like they were like frozen. And I conquered that hallway for the glory of God. And classmates were taken, more than 50, more than 100 of classmates 
taken for the glory of God. Why, church? Because I'm not afraid of the devil. The devil is afraid of you. When you choose, you're not afraid of him. Oh, my Lord. That's deep. The devil will be afraid of you once you choose that you will not be afraid of him. Amen? And the kingdom of my high school was taken for the glory of God. And I believe that, young man. Whatever you're in, whatever kingdom you're in, if you have faith in God, I speak that and I decree that over you. It will be taken for the glory of God. Because God is for you. God will not disappoint you because he loves you. Amen? Hallelujah. Number five, you will gain what you have promised. Church, go to Ezekiel. This is very vital and very crucial. Go to Ezekiel. God will accomplish what he says. And I pray, Father, that you shake these people up when, once they hear this word. You shake them. This was uh, to Ezekiel and Jeremiah had been prophesying for some months, and yet no conquest or no answer was, has occurred. And the people grew restless, and they were believing the lie. But I remind you, church, sometimes God takes you one step backwards so he could take you three steps forward. Because a problem is always fixed if there is a problem. A problem is always fixed once there is a problem. And until you give birth to it, because you're tired of it, that's when you will see the glory of God. It says in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 12, go to verse 21. Oh, shake them up, God. Get them good, Lord. Wham them. Yes, Sabah. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, what is this proverb you have in the land of Israel? You guys, God will speak to you through this. Let the Lord minister to you to this. The days go by and every vision comes to nothing. How many of you feel like that? Yeah. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I'm going to put an end to this proverb. And they will no longer quote it in Israel. Say to them, the days are near when every vision, every promise will be fulfilled. Amen. Oh, my Lord. My people didn't get that, Father. Do it again. <laughs> Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I'm going to put an end to this proverb. And they will no longer quote it in Israel. Say to them, the days are near when every vision will be fulfilled. For there will be no more false visions or flattering divinations among the people of Israel. But I, the Lord, will speak what I will. And it sh shall be fulfilled without delay. Oh, Lord. Church, lift up your hands and receive that. It shall be fulfilled without delay. Father, we take that right now. By faith in Jesus' name, we take that right now. I speak over that lost loved one. That lost loved one that you love with all your heart, that breaks your heart because they break his heart. I decree right now that under my voice, under the anointing of God, that God's spirit is here and there is an open heaven, that today is the day of salvation. Every chain of hindrances, every chain of, that is from the demonic realm, I cut it in Jesus' name. Whoa, and I decree today is the day of salvation. Any person that needs a job, God, finances, I loose it on earth, God. And I decree right now it is done. And the sick are healed in Jesus' name. Shopa, the days are near when every vision will be fulfilled. In Jesus' name. I'm almost done, church. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Really quick. Number six. With by faith, you shut the mouths of lions. You shut the mouths of lions. Church, I want to encourage you in the name of Jesus. As I was preparing this message, I saw a vision, and I saw the enemy. Once we, once we have doubt, the enemy laughs at you like a lion. He laughs at you like a lion because you choose to doubt and not to believe. 
But once the church of Jesus Christ choose to believe in him, it shuts the mouths of lions. Church, I come to tell you the truth. No matter what is your lion, no matter what is that lion, the enemy is like a roaring lion. But today, if you have faith in God, it shall be shut. Amen? Number seven, you will make it through. Say that with me. I will make it through. Say that again. I will make it through. Say it again. I will make it through. Church, the Bible says so. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. It is by faith you stand firm. Church, you will make it through. No matter what is happening, though you're ready to throw in the towel, though you're ready to give up, though you don't know what may be happening next to you all around you, but I come to tell you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, have faith in God because you will make it through. It is by faith you stand firm. Jesus said to Martha, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Today, as a messenger of God, I tell you the truth. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. You will see the glory of God. Proverbs 10, 25. That, that doesn't mean we will not go through storms. No, we will go through storms. We will go through storms. But remember, in order that the oil to come out of the olive, the olive needs to be crushed. Proverbs 10, 25, it says, When the storm has swept by, the wicked are gone and uprooted, but the righteous stand forever. You will stand forever. Many people, they tell me, oh, look at the Christians. They suffer and they're sick and they're blah, 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 blah. whatever. They tell me all this thing. And how about, how about the wicked? You see, that's the difference. When the wicked pass through the storm, they're gone. They're erased. They can't make it. But once the righteous pass through the storm, yes, I may be cut, but I am here. Church, I, oh, Shabbat, some of you have cuts, but they're your glory. They're your glory. Some of you have cuts, but they're your glory. What you have gone through, I haven't gone through, but it was God's spirit that took you from that, and therefore you have the anointing upon that. You will stand firm. Some of you, you have wounds because of that accident, because of that marriage and stuff like that, and because of that, that terrible agony, pain. But I come to tell you the truth. Your wounds will be your glory. Yeah. Jesus' main womb, his, his pierced hands, pierced foot was his glory. Church, that's why I tell you the truth. Your wounds are your glory. But by faith, you will stand firm. Jesus said, in this world, you will go through trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Church, I have good news for you. Take heart because he has overcome the world. Amen. Everybody stand up, stand up, stand up. Last one, number nine. Or whatever I am, number eight. You will be, when you have faith, you're in right standing with God. You're in right standing with God. The greatest place to be is in the perfect will of God. The greatest place to be is in right standing with God. The greatest place to be is with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Once you're in right standing with God, it makes you the most dangerous person on earth because you have God's attention. But it is by faith that you're in right standing with God. With every eye closed and every head bowed, how many of you, you feel you're not in right standing with God? Your relationship is not in right standing of God. You know if you die today, you will not go to heaven. And today, you want to be sure that you're sure that you're sure that you know that you know that you're fully persuaded that you will go to heaven. You want to know you will go to heaven. You have to be in right standing before God. God, I lost friends to death and I didn't reach them out for Christ. I lost people to death and I didn't reach them out for Christ I will not lose another opportunity church how many of you with every eye closed and every head bow you know you need Jesus Christ either a you need Jesus to come into your life you need a re renew awakening or B you never you don't know Jesus and you want him to be the Lord of your Savior or C you want to know that you know you go to heaven and hey, that's you if you fall under those three categories raise your hand like you mean it raise your hand like
like you mean it. Gray, I see hands all over. Raise your hands like you mean it. Raise it, raise it, raise it. Now I encourage you in the name of Jesus, get out from where you are. Get out from where you are. Don't think it. Don't doubt it. Don't question it. And come with it. Come, 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 come. Come right here. Come. Don't doubt it. Don't question it. Come right here. And I'll personally pray for you. Come right here. Come. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. I love you, man. Come, 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 come. Don't doubt it. Don't question it. Thank you, man. Don't doubt it. Thank you, brother. I love you, man. Thank you, sister. Come, come. If, if you feel you need to get right with God, come right here. Thank you, brother. Come. It doesn't matter. God loves you. He's for you and not against you. He wants to be with you until the very end of the world. Welcome. Thank you, my sister. If that's you, come on. I know there are some other people here. If that's you, come. If you know you need to be in right standing with God. If you're a youth and you know you need to be in right standing with Jesus. If you know you need Jesus over your life and you want him to come, come right here. How are you, brother? Doing good? Awesome, man. Come, come, come. If that's you, it doesn't matter. I don't care what people say. You see, that person that's right next to you, you don't know, but that God may remove that person because they're not part of your destiny. And if you need Jesus Christ to refresh you, you need that new relationship, come here in the altar and God will touch you forevermore. Come on, church. If I could have the worship band, please come up. The worship band. We're ready to get into a Holy Ghost party right here. Your precious pastor told me to please stay until 4 a.m. in the morning. For that, right? Now, all those who are here in the altar and those who are here, those who need to come or just here, the Bible says, if you acknowledge me before man, I will acknowledge you before my Father. What a great honor, what a great blessing. That if you acknowledge God right here, you're acknowledging God right before all these people. God is acknowledging before every angel in heaven. Yeah. He is my child. You are my daughter. You are my son. The Bible says if we confess our sins, Jesus Christ is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Bible says if we just have faith in Him, we're saved by grace. If we just have faith in Christ, we are saved. And one day I had a dream, and I saw Jesus, and Jesus was with me, and He told me everything about my life, everything about my destiny, the thing I remember the most. Uh, and I said to Him, Lord, what you want me to tell your people? What do you want me to tell your people? And he gave me such a bear hug, a strong hug. And he's like, Christian, my people need to know they're saved by grace. I don't care if all the faults, all the mistakes that you did, all the penalties, if you keep on sinning, 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 and you're like, I'm going to hell, don't believe that lie. You're washed by the blood of the Lamb. God is going to clean you and God's going to fix you up today because He loves you and you're called for His purpose. You're called for His destiny. No matter what people said in your past, no matter the people who have left your past, but God has a purpose for you. He brought you in this place because He loves you. Amen? I want everybody here in the altar and those who are listening to repeat this after me. Amen. Amen. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus right, now, right now, I confess, I confess you, are you are my Lord. You are my Savior. Are my Savior. Jesus, Jesus, you are my God. Are my God. Forgive, me Forgive me of my sins. Right now, right now my sins are forgiven. Mind my sins are forgiven. Life, my sins are forgiven by the blood of Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that you are not mad at me, but you're madly in love with me. Right now, Lord, fill me with you. Fill me with your purpose. I receive the grace of God to overcome, sin. to overcome sin. I receive, I receive the, Holy the Holy Spirit to give the devil, give the devil. a black eye. black eye. And right now, Jesus, I am all yours. I'm going to heaven, period. That closes it. It is settled. My name is written in your hand. You will never forget me. You will never because you are God. Right now, Lord, I am all yours. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
Church, close your eyes right here. I'm going to pray for you. I gave you my word. Thank you, Father. I want all of you. You guys are warriors. You guys know how to pray. Stretch your hands. Habakkuk 3, 4 says, the hidden power of God are in the hands. The hidden power of God are in the hands. There's something about it. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I cover each one of these souls with the blood of the Lamb. Each one with the blood of the Lamb. Lord is telling me right now, you have, you have blue opportunities. There are people here, you have blue opportunities. You have blue chances. You have blew them by your actions, by your sins, and by your mistakes. You think God is not pleased with you. You think it's over. Or you probably know that he will forgive you, but really it's left to the curve. You know, I blew my opportunity. God gave Esau, the brother of Jacob, another chance no matter if he lost his opportunity, no matter if he blew another chance, no matter if he lost it and that's it, God gave it to Esau. The Bible says he already had plenty. And if God gave Esau another chance, I come to tell you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God is giving you another chance, another opportunity. Don't worry about blowing it because the Holy Spirit is upon you. God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is with you until the end of the world. You want to know why you've been attacked? It's because you're a threat to the devil. And I seal that right now, Father. Protect them by that name which you gave Jesus. That by that name they may be one just as you and the Father one. And I decree right now they belong to you and only you. Father, I decree this heart and this soul. You are the heart. You own the heart. Tu eres el dueño de nuestro corazón. And Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I seal them with the precious blood of the Lamb. And I decree all these souls will not only hear a story, but will be a story. Because God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. The devil has fleed away from you because you're a threat to the devil. And I speak that over your life. God is giving you another chance, another opportunity. This salvation is sealed by the blood of the Lamb. The Holy Ghost is upon you. You are the beloved of the Lord. And I decree that in the name of Jesus. You are the beloved of God. God loves you so much, so much. He has removed them because He wants to keep you. Man's rejection is God's protection. And the reason why it has been people have rejected, things have rejected, Man's rejection is God's protection. And it was God keeping you all the time. Because God loves you. You're an answer prayer to many. And your purpose is right now upon you. Your destiny is right now upon you. Because God's Spirit is upon you. And I speak the Spirit of Christ upon you in Jesus' name. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Father, touch them in the name of Jesus. Seal them with the Holy Spirit. I decree right now, they're sealed by you, God, in the name of the Lord. Touch them all, Father. I decree right now, God is doing something new. Forget the former things, for He is doing something new. And I thank you right now, it is done. God, so each one of these souls are covered by the blood of the Lamb. Souls that are a threat to the devil. Souls that are a threat to the devil. And right now, these souls are left for you and only you. So I decree right now, these are the chosen generation, the royal priesthood, a people belonging to God, that they may declare the praises of Him, who call them out of darkness. God calls you out of darkness. He's giving you another chance. He's giving you another chance. And right now, you're here to proclaim the light. Don't let anyone look down on you, because the Lord always looks upon you, looks at you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If we could sing that song of, I don't know if it's possible, you need the thing. Oh, if we could sing that song, uh, More Love, More Power. Oh, okay. We could sing that. Church, before they sing that song, and keep playing that piano. I love that little piano -ish thing. Thank you. How are you doing, brother? God bless you, man. I want to thank every single one of you that came in the altar. God's going to use you strong and mighty. I promise you that. Your, your mess, please listen to me. Your mess will be your message. And your test will be your testimony. 
Remember that. Your mess will be your message. And your test will be your testimony. It is not over until God says it's over. It is not over. And I come to tell you in the name of Jesus, your best days are not behind of you, but are ahead of you. Are ahead of you. I don't care what this world says, what the devil says. God is faithful to his promises. One day I wasn't faithful to the Lord, and he led me to Romans 8. And, 8, and it says, if we are unfaithful to his promises, will that nullify God's promises? Indeed not. Let God be true and every man be a liar. This is the message of grace. People speak a message of legalism. I come to tell you the message of grace. God's giving you another chance. You're not over. Your life is not over. Your purpose is not over. Everything that you have, it's not over. In fact, right now, that mess will be your message. That test will be your testimony. It is sealed, and it is done in the name of the Lord. All right? Love you guys. Thank you.